Okay, so I have to make this recording before I forget. The revelations that I've gotten this week <clears throat> that are so random, but not. They're from the Lord Jesus. The first one I got this morning, early this morning. Holy Spirit, please let me not forget what you want me to say and only speak through me what you want me to say. <clears throat> and burn to the ground anything that is of my own thoughts that do not come from you, Lord Jesus, to glorify you, creator of heaven and earth. This morning early, these are going to be seem, seemingly random, but I don't want to forget. <clears throat> um, I woke up. I have a friend that did in vitro um, and has, so I've been kind of walking along that path with her just the past few years. And for some reason this morning, I wasn't thinking about it, but the Lord woke me up really early and just gave me this revelation out of nowhere. It was like, it's like, it's like the Lord just came in, told me something and then left. And then he does that whenever I have, I don't have a lot of dreams, but I've had certain dreams that I can, I know when it's the Lord because it's, it, it's like really quick. And then it's, then it's like, here's some knowledge and the things, those three dreams that I have had have all come to pass and they're all relating to pregnancy. Um, every, every specific dream that I had, it came to pass in the weirdest ways. That's another video. I don't say that lightly. They were specific and they came to pass all three regarding pregnancy. Now, um, the Lord woke me up this morning out of nowhere and he just gave me this download that the Lord, the Lord himself, because I always think about, you know, other seemingly secular things. And I sometimes I'll stew on them for a long time, just like treasuring them in my heart, wondering like, okay, well, how, how is the Lord in this? Um, and I guess I've been subconsciously wondering about in vitro. Well, the Lord woke me up this morning out of nowhere and said, I was the first one to do in vitro the like God, the creator of the Lord Jesus. God was the first one to do it, the ancient of days. Because he he planted the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a beautiful green cross that is sparkling on the side of the road. I've never seen it. That's nuts. It's I'm, it's nighttime, um, so I couldn't record this. Um, I lost the daylight. I'm driving. It was green cross with these white lights all over it, and on the side of the highway. As I was saying this, the Lord Je the God told me this morning, the Lord Jesus, He was the first one to do in vitro because He placed Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary the Virgin. It was not a sperm. It was a virgin birth. The only one in history that ever will. The Messiah. Because it wasn't Joseph's sperm. It was the Lord Jesus Christ being inserted God in human form into Mary's womb. God had to place the Lord Jesus. And God himself had to place himself the person of Christ into Mary's womb supernaturally because she was a virgin conception. So God was the, God was like, I'm the first one that did in vitro. And I was like, that makes perfect sense. That is so crazy. It makes perfect sense. He was. Um, so <clears throat> I immediately like texted my friend this. I was like, I know you don't think I'm crazy, but she was like, no, that's what's smart. And it really was crazy. I was like, that really is so smart. Like, I'm not even smart enough to think about that. And I've been thinking about this in my spirit for just years, you know, because of the people in my life that have been trying and doing in vitro. But um, the Lord Jesus was placed inside of Mary by God. Because in in vitro, you take the sperm and the egg, you join them together, you place it, it has to be placed inside the woman. <clears throat> because the natural process is not working for whatever reason. There could be many reasons. But you have women that go through this process and the, the man's sperm is joined with the female in a little dish and then they place it inside the woman and so, um, that is literally the Lord God 
put Jesus Christ, God in human form, into Mary as a virgin. He did that first. Confer- God said, I'm the first one that d- did in vitro. Oh, boy. So, that is crazy. Um, the second thing I don't want to forget <clears throat> is I was working out at the gym. Um, this is another thing I have been wondering in my spirit. Luke 2.19 says, one of my favorite verses, Mary treasured these things in her heart. Luke 2.19 there's other verses that are that are very similar to that about someone treasuring something in her heart but specifically Mary Luke 2:19 this can be anything that the Lord has told you that you have wondered about you treasure it in your heart like it's always in your subconscious you're wondering about it um and you're just it's treasured in your heart because you're wondering about this thing it could be in it subconsciously there like almost on the back burner it's always there and you're subconsciously just wondered about, wondering about it. So when the angel visited Ma- Mary and told her that she would um, give birth to the Messiah. And he, the angel said a prophecy about, I think the spear will enter him and you or something. And he'll be the Messiah. She did not fully understand that. Now she understood that God, she was going to birth Messiah, Jesus Christ, as much as she could understand it. She, I mean, she even said, my, may, my, may your will be done. May my, my soul magnifies the Lord. But did she fully understand? I, no way. There's no way she fully understood that. So she treasured that prophecy, although she believed it, she treasured it, wondering all the ins and outs of it, wondering like, what is this going to mean for my child? how he's going to grow up, what's going to happen to him, um, things like that. Because even the disciples were told that Jesus would go to the cross many times. Like even Jesus himself told them, but it says in the scripture, they understood none of these things, although they believed him as Messiah. So as humans, we only have so much we can understand. Like I can believe this, that the Lord has said, but all the details, I don't really understand. And so I treasure certain things in my heart. So I was working out at the gym and for years and years, since I was a little girl, I used to have these tics. Um, like I, I, people called it OCD and I would, I remember in high school, no middle school, middle school, not high school, middle school, having to touch like the, I would when I went to somebody's bathroom, I had to touch the four corners of like every picture frame. I had to touch the four corners of tables and like I had a prompt in my spirit like I had to do it or I felt like something bad was going to happen and ironically my sister had the same thing but over time I like I thought that this was like a tactic of the enemy I was like okay the enemy's trying to keep me manipulated into feeling I have to do these little routines or something bad's going to happen so <clears throat> I would do them um just because they were like, you know, touch the four corners of tables and, and picture frames. It was really weird. It was always the four corners I had to touch. Um, like, and like I had somebody I knew close to me, like my sister, she'd have to turn, maybe do something three times or something like that. But um, in, at the gym, I was doing these, I was doing sets. I had like four sets to do of this particular workout. And I was like, do what I I, I had done three but I was like I'm not gonna do the fourth one and um I was literally not gonna do it I was like I'm not gonna do it no big deal but I had this prompt and it reminds you know that I still get sometimes and it prompted me to say like do it like do it like and um as I've grown in the Lord and the Holy Spirit I had I instantly got hit with this revelation and I literally stood by the machine and I was like oh my gosh like I literally was like I can't believe this I got hit with a revelation from the Lord after wondering all of these years and the Lord downloaded into my spirit the Holy Ghost I mean this is crazy because I've been wondering about this for literally since I was like middle school middle school I've always just wondered what was that um the Holy Spirit said that that is me that was me training you to be obedient to the promptings of the Holy Ghost I literally was like, oh, my dear God. Like, and so I 
did it. Then I was like, I'm doing my, I did, I finished, I did the next set. I was like, this, I was literally like, cr- I wish somebody would have been around. I, I was like, oh, I was beside myself. Like all of those times when I was in middle school and a little kid having to touch the four corners and I would, I would do the prompts. I would do them until I finally like kind of broke myself of them. The Holy Ghost was like, that was me preparing you to obey and be prompted in the Holy Ghost to do things. Um, because this is crazy. This year I had really been, been learning how to be very obedient to the promptings of the Holy Ghost. Thank God I have a friend who has, um, very, um, impulsive regarding the Holy Ghost as well. And, um, knows the Lord Jesus as, as the Lord and Savior. And, um, my, my, his fiance I was talking to the other day about the, how he has the gift of those promptings. And, um, a lot of times, and he challenged me the other, a few months ago on the phone with her and said, like the next person that you see, the next line you see outside of a building, cause it's COVID, there's lines, you need to proclaim the gospel. I challenge you. And so this whole year I've been doing things like that, like being prompted to tell someone about Christ at, at a Walmart, out of nowhere, like grab somebody and tell them about Christ or go knock on doors um, just being obedient to the prompting. So I'm always praying as an, as a, as an evangelist, anybody who's a follower of Jesus Christ, but especially the evangelist and the prophetic, you have to learn to be obedient to promptings of the Holy Ghost, especially if you're, have the gift of prophet, prophecy, Continue straight. especially if you have the gift of prophecy, you and evangelism, because everyone is supposed to share the gospel of Christ. It says in the Bible, um, tell the whole world you're the salt of the earth. Go out and get the other sheep that are. I have sheep that are not of this fold. Go to the hedges and the highways, and compel them to come in. Um, I'm evangelist by heart, called by the Lord Jesus. If you are an evangelist, a gift of evangelism, specifically, everyone's supposed to evangelize, but there are people. In a quarter of a um, mile, there are straight. people. That have specific giftings, it says in the Bible, I'm not sure exactly where, I don't have my Bible, that have giftings in evangelism, um, specifically like the gift of prophecy, the gift of mercy. Continue straight. So there are those that have those gifts, especially like to do as their life job. And so if you have a gift of prophecy or especially a, an evangelist, he gave some prophets, some evangelists, some teachers. That's what the scripture says. Um, he gave gifts to all men, some evangelists, some prophets, some teachers. And the spirit gives to no, to, to no, there's no measure in the spirit. So you could have all those things. You could have a couple of those things. None of those things or at least, you know, one or two. But I had the gift of prophetic utterance and evangelism. So those promptings I have been this year that God has been, the Lord Jesus has been showing me and how to use those promptings and be obedient to them, even if they're crazy, like crazy. Like even Marcus Rogers told his testimony about how God told him to it work to dip his whole head into a bucket of water or something. It was such an amazing testimony. Um, so this year, especially I have been doing just following those promptings. Um, and it's even led somebody to Christ at Home Depot, um, things like that. The, as used as because we're vessels, vessels to speak with the Holy Ghost is saying to 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 glorify the Lord in whatever way that looks like. So sometimes I'll have a prompting to to go up to somebody and tell them a scripture or ask if they're saved or knock on their door. Um, but those, so if you have a gift of prophecy or evangelism, you especially have to be super, super sensitive to those promptings. Now, everyone needs to be super sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Ghost, but these gifts operate especially in those promptings more so if you're an evangelist or a prophetic or a prophetic. So, um, that is such a, a mind blowing thing that the revelation the Lord gave me at the gym. Um, that out of all these years, I've been wondering what was that? Like I was like, try, I tried to break it for so long, and I, I did because I mean it can get out of control. Where you're like, you have to touch something three times, or you have to do this. Um, but my sister has it too, had it. So 
Um, that is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was new, knew my calling. And for all those years, I didn't know and thought, well, this is the enemy trying to make me like a weirdo or have an OCD. And I got it under control. I mean, out of all these years, the Lord just told me at the gym that those promptings were practice and preparation for being obedient to the Holy Ghost promptings as I go into my um, walk into fully walk into my calling as an evangelist, a speaker, a prophetic voice. Um, So God is, if you are hearing this, just ask the Lord Jesus. I believe that when you hear this, you're going, the Holy Ghost, because it says, Revelation 12, 11, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I always quote that. So this testimony, I've seen it happen over and over. And by faith, come, hearing comes by faith and faith faith comes by hearing and by the word of God. So when you hear this, whoever you are, I pray in the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost would uh, direct this uh, channel, uh, whoever it's for, that you will, res- this will, this will, you will understand what I'm saying. You will have an ear to understand because this is specifically for you. That you, the Lord Jesus, I pray, would just reveal to you those things that you treasure in your heart, the Luke 219 moments. And I have way more than one. But just recently, two in the past week have just come to pass out of nowhere. I mean, one time I was just getting up, the Lord woke me up. And the next time I was just working out. Like I wasn't like fasting. I wasn't praying. I wasn't at that specific moment. He just was like, okay, I'm going to tell you something right now. And that's so amazing. So I just pray in the name of Jesus, whoever is hearing this, you will be able, God will reveal to you. And it's such a sweet, personal, amazing thing. You would never reveal that. You would never understand that by yourself. That is God. That is the Holy Ghost of Jesus Christ revealing that he was with you. He was preparing you for the, for the function in the body of Christ, the gifting, the calling, it's peculiar for now that you would think back and he would bring to your memory because the Holy Ghost, it says in the scripture that the Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance the things that he wants to bring to your remembrance at that time. I don't know the scripture, but the Holy Ghost is one that brings back to your remembrance. So treasure those things in your heart and let, I pray, and I know in the name of Jesus, he's going to reveal. In one mile, continue straight. He's going to reveal. Now, why does the Lord Jesus, why does the Holy Ghost decide to do this? I think it's number one, to confirm your calling. Number two, to show that even back then, before you even knew you had a calling, those things that he, that a part of your life, those strange situations, those quirks, those things, he was there preparing you. If you are a child of God, you know Jesus Christ as your savior for your calling. And if you're not, you be, you need to, you need to, you need to pray to the Lord Jesus to, to take over your life and surrender your life because he's your creator. But I'm talking to those believers right In now. In a quarter of a mile, continue um, straight. So... It's re- it was really re- interesting to have those the Lord just come in and reveal that. So, um, I feel like there was something else I was supposed to say. Um, you're calling and continue these- straight. Um, also, I want to refer- reference one of the first YouTube videos I ever watched um, and regarding Christ and the body of believers um, that the Lord led me to was. Um, uh, a, a blessed, blessed believer named Shandy, Shandy on YouTube. And it was, she was the first YouTube video, I think the second or the third I'd ever watched, that God, when God opened the door to YouTube and testimonies and stuff, and I'm going through a tunnel. I hope I don't lose connection. But she said that when she was younger, she had this vision of a dream house. When she was little, she remembers being in class and having a vision. Uh, uh, she remembers being little. And drawing her dream house. And she said that she had a thought. And it could not have been her own. Even when she was little. 
And she was recalling it. And she remembers drawing her dream house. And there's these ha- houses, these stables. And she wanted horses at her dream house. But as a kid, she remembered thinking, well, what if I don't like, what if I like the idea of horses? But I don't, I wouldn't like to take care of them. Only God would know. Only God would know. She, and as she was telling this testimony, she says she looked back and the Lord revealed to her that that was God, even revealing to her as a child, that um, she'd always obviously wondered about that because she goes, for a child to think that, that's not a child's thought. That's pretty, that's pretty intelligent. That's pretty, you know, way past your mental capacity as a child to know, well, I'm, not, I'm drawing a dream house. I like the idea of horses, but what if I wouldn't like taking care of them, you know? Um, and I tell this to people all the time. So God used her childhood and brought it back to her memory that that was the Holy Spirit preparing her and te- teaching her things even as a child. And it hit her years later. And I always say this, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders build in vain. Psalm 127, 1. And people will say, Noel, what is your, what is your, what is your, where do you want to live? Where do you want to work? I, 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 I say to them, and I had this conversation with a guy in Pensacola. I said, whatever God's will is for my life. And he said, no, what do you want to do? What do you? And he kept saying it. I said, literally, let me explain it. I could get a job offer for the most perfect job in the world, but only the mind of God. What if I pick up my whole life, move there? But then when I get to work, I realize that it's not really what I wanted. My bosses who seemed nice weren't really um, who I thought I would want to work for. What if the area that I thought maybe was a good area was just not for me? I just didn't like the area or um, the job just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Only the mind of Christ can see the future and know your future. So it might seem awesome like I, I, this job in front of me, this is an awesome opportunity. But if I, I don't. Only God can know. It t- it would take somebody lifetimes, as Shandy Shandy would say, who told that dream house story lifetimes to get the house, get the area of job that you want, to go through it. Spend it takes time to realize what's for you and what's not. If you're operating out of Christ, you know, it takes time. Only it would take lifetimes. You could waste lifetimes trying to live in this area or that area, take this job or that job to do what Christ already knows. So Christ already knows the best will for your life. So that's why it is actually illogical for you to think and not operate by and not surrender to the Holy Ghost of Jesus Christ, the creator of the world, because he sees ahead of you. He sees what's coming. He knows everything. Like, so you need to surrender your will to him and say, Lord, wherever you want me, or I can move to an area of town that I take a job that didn't seem that that didn't seem like something I would want. But then let's say a couple months pass and God just starts to show me areas that I didn't know in that town or brings me to the right house, you know, just around the corner I did I missed. You can't see everything. Only God, Jesus Christ can. So it is illogical for you to try to plan your destiny. Without Jesus Christ, the Lord being Lord of your life and directing your will for to his, his liking. And it's a very, it's not an easy thing to try to discern because that's been the past five years for me trying to discern, trying to get to my purpose, which way, which way. But the point is, let the Lord Jesus, whoever's listening, you have a moment. You have things that you've been treasuring in your heart, wondering about. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ prophetically that God, the Holy Spirit, as you listen to this, will either give you a vision, a dream, maybe just a quick flash like me at the gym and give you revelation of what happened in your life or something about you that is only God could tell you and would know about you that makes perfect sense for your calling to glorify him. And if you're an empath, You claim like empath, intuitive. That is just another, that is a spiritual gift. That is not from the world. Empath is just a layman's term for a spiritual gift of discernment. This gift of discernment, the Bible says. Some people have the gift of discernment to discern spirits. If you're the empath, 
the intuitive, that is just a layman's term. And a lot of non-believers talk about this. Now, they are correct in what the gift does. But if they're saying that it's not operating from Jesus Christ, then they're, they're just, they're calling what God is doing, not God. And God creates every gift. So the empathy, the, the intuitiveness, and God actually used that in my life as I was researching it. He literally had me researching this before I had the encounter with Christ. I was researching this on my computer, the empath intuitive, because I knew something was inside of me that was different. I was sensitive. I could sense on a sensitive level and like an empathic intuitiveness that was I knew it was higher than most people. Um, Not that I'm better, but I'm just saying that's my calling. I knew it. So I started researching it. And only in a few weeks after that, Jesus Christ revealed that it was him. He put that in me. And it's the gift of discernment and prophetic utterances for his glory. So that's all I've got. I hope and I know that this will find who it's supposed to find. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen.